Friday again, so it's time for Tactical Talks. Um, we're going to do something a little bit different this time. We're going to be doing a group discussion with two buddies of mine. So this is my buddy Frank, and this is Chase. They're also police officers like I am. Um, I posed a question a few Tactical Talks ago asking about my outer vest, and I got a lot of positive feedback about you guys talking about my belt, my vest, stuff like that. So the question I asked was, is it too tactical or is it too militarized? So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Is it too militarized? Is law enforcement going too much that way? And is that a good or a bad thing? So one of my subscribers, Ant Diesel, hit me up and made a video. If you haven't got if you guys haven't checked that video out, go check it out. He did a, a really cool little video in response to my video. Talked about a bunch of stuff and, and gave me a really big shout out. So kind of without further ado, I guess that's what we'll kind of roll into. So. I think from our our side of the fence being the ones wearing the vest and doing all that from a practical application standpoint <clears throat> it's more effective to hold some gear it gets it off your hips onto your body carrying it from a, from a load bearing position it, it feels a lot better I, I just think it's more practical but it does obviously have some kind of impact on the response we get from the citizens that we deal with on a daily basis is it a negative response I don't know is it a positive response you could look both ways. Um, <clears throat> I think that there definitely needs to be a, um, a healthy, I don't want to say fear, but a distinction between when we show up, yeah. time, you know, it, it's time to handle business. Kind of, I don't kind think, of like a little more aggressive presence mm -hmm. rather than a fear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I don't think people need to look at us and, and think that <clears throat> it's a debate or it's open for discussion. Um, while part of our job is, but at the same time, you know, we show up to something where we've got it. We've got we have this thing called command presence that we learn and you know are taught, and I think that 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 adds to it and it, it helps establish some. Uh, I would say some positive reinforcement from the people that we are um, protecting out there, good people that are not not criminals or anything like that. I think it gives them a. Uh, a sense of capability for us from my personal opinion and going back to the um, <clears throat> to the beginning when you're talking about comfort from the <coughs> officer's perspective um, wearing these belts and stuff with you know 20 pounds of gear on it you know it, 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 it takes its toll over over some time um, and I think being able to function and, and be more comfortable and, and uh, you know, being able to <clears throat> not hurt on the job, hurting your back, things like that, um, you produce better quality work. So uh, I think I think it's a really good thing. Now as far as um, the, the whole militarization or militarized look that it, anyway, I hate to refer to the shows, but you know people watch that, that's where people get their perspective from, you know watching live PD or cops and things like that. And if you look at the officers there, more and more departments are going to load bearing vests mm -hmm. where, their equipment's, you know, on their shoulders and not on their, not on their belt, not on their waist. Mm. So, it, you're you're gonna have both sides of it either way. Um, more than likely, it's gonna be probably the older folks that, that think it's too militarized. Well, some of the younger folks too, with this new generation of people. But um, all in all, <clears throat> in in my particular opinion, I think it's 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 a better all the way around. I mean, as far as as far as uh, comfort and uh, being able to work. See, and I think my argument to this whole too militarized or too aggressive, my argument to that is every call that we go to, we have a gun on us. It's out. It's in plain view. I mean, every officer has a gun. It's so a just, look. just because I have a vest on <clears throat> that I'm able to move attachments, I'm not adding anything new. I'm just moving attachments from one place to another. I don't know how that makes us more aggressive. You're not going to get any more aggressive than carrying a gun on you. I mean, you can carry a bigger gun. I guess that might make you a little more aggressive, but the the whole argument of that looks too tactical or too aggressive, I mean, just a couple of extra pieces of nylon, you know? What if we explored the notion that it made no difference at all what we wore? Yeah. Um, you've, got, I mean, you've got departments that have a wide variety, you know, look, look at state troopers. They're they're probably never going to go to anything like that. Um, state trooper is a standard standard looking uniform. People have been, people have been recognizing that for a long time, even the cowboy hats and stuff. I know I've talked to a lot of my trooper friends that 
they necessarily don't even like the cowboy hat, but it's part of their uniform. Mm-hmm. It's what they wear. So, <clears throat> is is moving to the tactical vest or a, a Molly style vest so we can put attachments and and gear up on our our body? Does it um, maybe maybe making this whole notion that that it looks too tactical or too aggressive? Maybe we're the ones creating that, and there is no there's no um, perception at all from what that is. Um, I know people look at Molly webbing and um, correlate it to the military, but you know maybe people don't understand that that's a that's a way to hold um, a way to hold gear yeah. and have a different kind of loadout instead of it all being on your hips because there is a practical application to having a Molly style vest. I mean, we all know that it affects your knees, it affects your feet, your ankles, your hips, the way you walk when you're off. Just just sitting in your car, having yeah. stuff on your back, yeah. creating that gap and that, you know, that the whole ergonomics behind it of you're having to bend a little bit different just to yeah. sit in your car and drive. And yeah. I mean, that, that alone, you're sitting like that for hours at a time right. at work. It's, it's going to yeah. take you its toll on you. You may not necessarily know when, when you're doing it, mm-hmm. but over a long period of time when you start feeling aches and pain yeah. and yeah. stuff, it's all because of that. That's the same thing. I notice where my gun sits so low, I overcompensate and kind of torque my body a little bit so that it's not applying pressure. But, yep. I mean, if I sit like this for too long, I'm going to start getting pains, at least on one side of my back, for overcompensating yeah. or overdoing it. I think at the end of the day, uh, a patrol officer has to has to have on them the essentials um, to work a wide variety of uh, things, whether it be going to take a forgery case at Walmart when the suspect is unknown or long gone or whatever, obviously that wouldn't be a situation where um, a Molly style vest would be applicable or needed. But in the same, the same breath, you leave that call and you respond to an armed subject call mm-hmm. right after that. That's, that's kind of the, the diversity that, that plagues a patrol officer on a 12 hour shift or however long their shifts are. Um, is you never know what you're going to, so it's kind of going back to the uh, the concept of have it. I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. And that kind of just goes back to the whole deal that I mean, you, you see it more in bigger cities and stuff like that. But the whole baiting issue, where somebody will call in something minor just to get a response from officers, oh, yeah. yeah, and then try to use that opportunity, you know, opportunity to ambush them. So, yeah. I mean, for all you know, it's like, oh, we're going to this loud party call. I don't need any of this stuff, but yeah. you really want to risk not having it. What if it's a baiting situation? Yeah. So, well, we, you know, we've gone to to presumable high risk calls and not ever pulled the gun. Yeah, or had to do any any kind of show of force other than just show up. Yeah, and I think going back to uh, Ann Diesel's video, I was, I was watching it and I was reading some of his comments and stuff, and they may be a little biased just because they're his viewers, but. Um, there was a lot of support, a lot of yeah. a lot of uh, welcome, you know, to to, to the load bearing vest and, and the Molly and the, the look of it and everything. Um, but I think I think again, that's that's just kind of society today. It's kind of evolving, and, and people are a little more accepting of it. Um, I think five, ten years ago, it would have been yeah. completely different. And I think our department uh, kind of speaks for that because it was offered. Um, it was an option mm-hmm. uh, to go to those at some point, and it was declined specifically because it was looked too militarized. So, like I said, I think I think times have changed, and, and, and people are going to be a little more accepting, especially of today's society with things being out in the open and, and social media putting putting police and, and all these crimes and mass shootings and things like that um, for everybody to be able to see. So, you know, a police officer being how he dresses and, and how he's equipped it's not really that big of a deal anymore yeah you know and i know it you know like we talked about before even starting this video it's kind of a touchy subject but the you know our country is going through so much right now with all of these it's like i heard a reporter say it the other day it's almost like it's not even news anymore when you, when you wake up and you hear about 11 people dead um you know a movie theater shooting a school shooting you know whatever the case is um the, the, the facts about all those things from a, from a, a patrol officer's standpoint is a patrol officer is the first person who's going to be called to that, that scene. Um, while, it, while some people share the luxury of having a, a, a SWAT team or something like that that, that is uh, quicker deployed or on, on a patrol of some kind, we don't share that luxury. We, we do have a SWAT team and they're, they're very effective at what they do, but 
you know, the ergonomics of things is it, it's a it's a 30 to 45 minute response time, and most of those incidents are over um, minutes, maybe even yeah. you know half an hour or something like that. So um, I know one of my plans uh, for for my vest, whenever I can move some of the gear from my belt up to uh, my torso area, is to uh, put an extra um, AR mag in a, in a belt holster just so I can kind of have that on my person because more often than not when I do grab my rifle I have time to get my rifle but I don't have time to put on my heavy vest which has all of my resupply of ammunition for my rifle um, and so in a situation like that I mean and everybody says it it happens and you, you never think that it's going to happen to you in San Angelo is just like any other town on the map where a church shooting happens or a bar shooting or whatever the case is it could be us and inevitably we're probably going to experience that you know close to home i hope not but it, it's it's happening so much and so often that uh you know why why would you not equip yourself with the the necessities to handle an incident like that you know so my channel is still kind of small and i've had a lot of different people comment you know i've had guys tell me i've been on for 10 years 12 years 15 years whatever and they talk about my setup and how they like the way I do this, like the way I do that. And I also get a lot of, uh, you know, why don't you try this kind of stuff. But something that kind of I thought was really cool was I have a bunch of younger people hitting me up asking how do they get on with the police department or how do I do this or how do I do that. So they're learning before they're even going into this job field, which I think is really smart. And I try to, I've commented back as much as I can uh, when people ask me questions like that. But for you guys, I mean, I've been doing this longer than Chase has. Frank's been doing this longer than I have. So we all kind of have our different ideas on the way things work and the way we like things. But kind of some information for these guys that are younger, wanting to get in this field, or maybe they're just brand new to the field. What is something that, you know, maybe some good advice, some good gear? What's something that you would want to pass on to them? Yeah, don't don't skimp on gear. Um, I find myself doing it all the time. I mean, it's 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 expensive, but. <clears throat> We have a we had a sergeant <clears throat> in my academy that said, "What's what's the price of your life?" And <clears throat> I know that's not applicable to every situation, you know, a backup flashlight or something like that. But when you talked about when you talk about the essentials of your duty gear, um, a retention style holster that's not going to fail or going to have minimal chances of failing, um, a good duty belt that's going to hold up over time, just just solid gear. You can always go the cheaper route. Um, and there's <clears throat> there's times where you can skimp on some gear that's not essential gear, but more of like a luxury thing, um, if it's a little bit cheaper option or something like that. But always take your training seriously. Um, don't get complacent. Me and Frank work a, a high school here um, in Texas, pretty much once or twice a week, something like that. And it's really easy to get complacent when you're working up there for eight hours or whatever because it's just a bunch of high school kids because a lot of a lot of the things that we do can be repetitive um the places that we go to type reports the places that we go to grab a drink the same store all this kind of stuff you know it's good to switch things up keep you on your toes and, and always keep in that mindset of you know um what would you do or what could you do if this happened um i watched a video that's uh, a long time ago i think while i was going to the academy and there was a, a saying that somebody said, and I don't remember what video it was on or anything like that, but or who said it, but you can apply it to pretty much every situation, um, especially in law enforcement or military or, or whatever you're, you're doing. And uh, the saying goes, the body will never go where the mind has never been. And so basically what that means is, you know, if we're approaching a car on a traffic stop or something, and we have not explored where we are at that time, where cover is, where where concealment is, uh, extra magazines, if my weapon fails. I know that's a lot to think about every single time you do something that is repetitive, but when shit hits the fan and that person comes out and either you know engages you in a gunfight or wants to be confrontational, you've got to you don't you don't want to be sitting there then exploring your options for where cover is, where concealment is, or where a backup gun is, or Where's my flashlight? What's in my right hand? All that kind of stuff. Um, just get into the mindset about, you know, as you're, as you're sitting there typing a report, man, if somebody came up, this is what I would do. Or 
I know where all my, you know, so a lot of times I'll, I'll reach over and I'll, I'll touch my stuff as I'm just cruising to make sure that I've got that muscle memory for another flashlight, my long rifle, you know, ticket book, what, whatever it is, just so not all of your attention has to be focused on what you're doing at the time. So I think that's a really good saying and then you can apply it to a lot. I think if you, if you talk to a lot of officers, a, a lot of the times topics come up about shooting and, and having to shoot somebody or something. That's, that's always worst case scenario because that's basically what's always on our mind. Um, we're always prepared for worst case scenario. Um, and a lot of those situations happen to be, you know, somebody armed with a, with a gun or us having to shoot somebody or something like that. Um, so if I had to give any kind of advice, it, it'd be basically talk to an officer, talk to somebody who you might know, um, get in, get into their head a little bit, see what, see what they do on a daily basis. See what, see what kind of things that they prepare for and, and what prepared them to become a police officer. Um, cause we've had instances where, you know, officers come into this department and it's, it's completely different from what they expected. Um, they're, they're dealing with, with a lot, you know, higher, uh, well, dangerous, more dangerous things than, than they expected to. Um, so just kind of be, you know, get into the mindset and, and, and speak to somebody about what do we actually do. As far as equipment, <coughs> um, I, I agree a hundred percent with, with, uh, buying quality equipment. Um, there's been instances where, you know, you get into a struggle or, you know, get into a fight or, or something happens and, um, I've been in situations where officers' guns or their equipment has fallen out of their belt because they didn't have, you know, quality equipment. Um, I've had instances where people have tried to pull my gun out of my holster, and because I had that extra retention, um, you know, they weren't able to. So, equipment can save your life. It can so. save somebody else's life too. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, the, never you don't ever want to skimp on skimp on the quality of your equipment. So. Yeah, anything else you want to add or? Um, you all feel good with that? Just like, just a quick little thought too. If you have no interest in becoming a police officer, um, but you're interested in, in the field or, or what we do or whatever the case is, or maybe you just want to know you've never been pulled over before. Um, just like Frank said, if you're interested in talking to an officer about law enforcement, conversations can go the other way too about um, your side of the fence. Um, a lot of people don't know what what appropriate behavior is on a traffic stop or. When a police officer comes up to you and talks to you, doesn't always mean, um, you know, you're detained or, or this and that. You can, you should, you should equip yourself with the knowledge of what is appropriate behavior, uh, what's expected of us, and what 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 your rights are. Um, unfortunately, we also live in a society today where there have been there have been officers in the past who abused their power or who uh, conduct themselves in an unlawful manner. Um, so it behooves you to know what your rights are and what we can do in the scope of what, what, what we're able to do on certain situations. Um, but I know if me, me and Joe worked a, a program called the Traffic Safety Program. Basically what that meant was we just went out and enforced traffic laws. And there were several times when I was doing that stuff um, and making those stops that I've, I've pulled over first-time people who have never been stopped before, and they, they kind of had a little bit of a freakout. And... One of the things that we look for, you know, <clears throat> normal behavior um, is always going to be a little bit anxious, a little bit nervous, and we expect that. But whenever we have somebody who takes it over the top, our mind starts going in a completely different direction. Does this person have something they're trying to hide from us? You know, do they have a gun in the car? Are they trying to get away? You know, we look at a, a ton more things than what that person's experiencing, but we do empathize and understand that that person is experiencing some level of anxiety and it maybe it would help some people if they've never been stopped before and hopefully you never do get stopped um, you know we always encourage abiding by the law and uh, but in the event that you ever find yourself on the, the receiving end of a traffic stop learn or talk to a police officer about what appropriate behavior is and what what we're looking for and what's expected of us I mean nothing has to be rushed or anything like that and just in case you want to know just I guess if there's one thing uh, aside from the gears stuff that we've been talking about that I feel like there's there's a there's a massive separation in police in the public and I am always open and encourage people to come talk to us we're people just like you are and 
despite what the patrol officers or the detectives or whoever where in your neighborhood or wherever you're at always know that police officers should be approachable and you should be able to go to them and ask questions talk to them um, and, and just ask them anything that you need to ask them um, I, I, I'm always a proponent for being open to people and kids and all that stuff so and on that same note like Chase was saying we work central <clears throat> work in high school um, we, we try to make it a point to talk to talk to some of these kids and stuff whether or not they really want to talk to us or not even if we're just goofing off or whatever just to try to build a rapport with these kids because today's generation that, that are in, that are in school they're, they're different um, and they don't necessarily want to interact with the police so if they kind of we kind of humanize ourselves and, and interact with these people then you know They'll, they'll be more willing to, to maybe call us whenever they need help or um, if they have a question or if they have a problem or anything like that, then they'll, they'll be willing to, to talk to us and not you know, be afraid or whatever the situation is. Well, I mean, if that's all you guys got, then we'll kind of end it on that. This way this video isn't too long. But let me know what you guys think of this video. Is this something you guys want to see more of, kind of a group discussion, bouncing ideas? I try to put out whatever information I have, but... Like I, I told you guys before, I mean, I'm, I'm not an expert in any of this. I learn as I go. So I usually bounce my ideas off of these guys. So if there's something you guys want to know, you have any questions, comment down below. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you on the next one.